When we got to Philadelphia, I'm going to wrap up with this because I can see that glazed look in some of your eyes. Cape Henry, Jamestown, Plymouth. I I started to tell you this. I'll tell you this before I get to Philadelphia. One of our team members started, had been researching her family lineage, ancestry, and had one place going back that she couldn't find. She received a phone call from a friend or someone that was helping her, or I don't know if she Googled or what, but anyway, in the van, on the way to Jamestown, just before we arrived, she found that link she was looking for, and her ancestor was the wife of Robert Hunt, the founder of Jamestown. Her great-great-great-great-great-grandmother was a part of Jamestown. Just a coincidence. We had supernatural after supernatural thing that took place, and God would show us what to pray in each place. So Cape Henry, then Jamestown, then Plymouth, then Boston, then York, then Philadelphia, then D.C. In Philadelphia, we went to a place called Penn Treaty Park. It's a, it's a, it just looks like a quiet, small park in the middle of town where kids can come and play. It's not really anything touristy like some of the places in, New- in Philadelphia. You'd have to know it was there and you'd have to be going there on purpose. You'd, you wouldn't just see it, oh, this is another special place, let's go see what it is. Penn Treaty Park, because Penn entered into a covenant, they called it a treaty, but it's a covenant, that's what he called it too, with the First Nations people. Because the king gave him this land, but he realized he doesn't have the, he, he can't give me this land. These people own this land. So he negotiated a price and he paid them and he entered into a covenant with them, which is one of the few, maybe only, covenant with the First Nations people that was never broken. It may have been broken later, but with, when, when Penn's time, lifetime, that was never, it was never broken. So there's a monument there to that covenant. Penn also prayed, William Penn. He prayed, he was a very, very godly man. He prayed that Pennsylvania, or the Penn Territory, would become the seed of a nation. End from the beginning, time catches the decree. Years later, our nation is born in Philadelphia. The Declaration of Independence, Continental Congress, the government is formed all in Philadelphia. The Liberty Bell, declaring freedom. Leviticus, what is the reference, is on the Liberty Bell. They don't tell you that in school. Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. They rang the bell. Our nation was born and decreed a nation, free nation, under the ringing of that bell with a quote from Leviticus saying, Proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants. And, and that's a Jew believers. And Christ became our Jubilee that gave us that liberty. So literally, our nation was born under the ringing of the prophetic word of the cross. Well, we're there, you know, and we, so we go to the park and we, entered, we realized immediately that we had stepped onto holy ground. That this was more than just a, a monument. The presence of God filled the place and we gathered around the little monument and we began to pray, worship, took communion and the presence of God continued to fill this park. Then we realized two of the, at least two of the people saw angels come, begin to fill the park. And we realized suddenly we have tapped into a root of covenant and mercy. 
keeping of covenant and mercy and that this man, that God had honored his prayer to birth a nation from there. It was, a, it was one of the most amazing moments of my life. Chick Clay said, mine too. I said all that to say, a few months ago, Clay sent me a dream. And in the dream, we were back in Penn Treaty Park on what we called the retracing tour because the prophecy said retrace the covenant, the, the, the places. He said, we were back in Penn Treaty Park and the presence of God was there like it was and the angels. And then Donald Trump walked into the park. The president. I'm not so sure some of these dreams about him that, that, I, that have been given to me, like, that it's so much him as maybe him, but, but absolutely it's, it's, it's what he represents. It's the highest seat of authority naturally in the nation. But he walked into the park, walked up to us. And he said one sentence in the dream. We can move on from here now. We can move on from here now. We can move on from We've reestablished covenant. And we can move on now. Move on to what? Move, move into the fruit of that. The awakening. The outpouring. The blessing. Life. Harvest. All of the things we're crying out for. It's time.